All right, we're recording our eight problems. Here you go. 48, two. Um, absolute values, Kay. seven minus y. Seven minus y. Plus one. Plus one. Is less than 17. 17, okay. All right, okay, what first? Minus one, which is 16 divided by two. Can I do this? Is less than eight. Right? Can I do that? I skipped a bunch of steps there. Is that okay? Yeah. Or is that confusing? Okay. All right, now, two cases. 7 minus y is less than 8. And negative 7 plus y is less than 8. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to subtract the 7. Negative y is less than 1, or positive y is greater than negative 1. If you divide. Yes? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, now add the 7. So y is less than 15. What do they want? Everything. Everything? Okay, negative 1's over here. And greater than, so that way. 15's here. Less than, that way. Interval notation? One piece or two pieces? Do we have to graph it? I don't know. It doesn't say to graph. It doesn't say to graph. It, it wants set builder and interval. Negative one comma fifteen. Right? Negative one comma fifteen. Brackets or parens. Parens for both. That's interval notation. Good. Yay. Okay. What else? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Oh, you guys are killing me. Fifty-eight. Okay. 58. Somebody read me 58. <laughs> 15, okay. 15 is less than. Okay. Absolute value, okay. Negative 2D minus. Negative 2D minus what? Is less than 6? No, plus 6. And that's it? Okay. 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 Well, first, minus a 6. So 9 is less than absolute value negative 2D minus 3. Okay. All right. Now two cases. 9 less than negative 2D minus 3, and 9 is less than positive 2D plus 3. Okay. Am I going too fast? Add the 3. That is 12. <coughs> Divide by negative 2. That is negative 6 greater than D. Okay, if you like to write it like this, I'm going to flip him around. Okay, all right, over here, minus 3, minus 3, that's 6 less than 2D, divide by 2. 3 less than D, or D greater than 3. Okay, negative 6, positive 3, open circles on each. Going together or going opposite? Away from each other. So, Interval notation, we're going to have a union because we're going to have two separate pieces. Okay. Um, what's the very, very leftmost point? Negative, negative infinity to negative six. Brackets or parens? Mm -hmm. Parens on both. Okay. Three, two, okay. infinity. Parens on both. There you go. That's interval notation. Okay. You might not have needed to graph it, but I think graphing it makes it easier to convert to interval notation. I don't know about you, but that's what I think. Okay. I didn't even like. I didn't. I didn't want to. Just divide this to a Okay. All right. Now what? I have a leading question. What? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Read it to me. Uh, a. Okay. Oh. A. B. A. B. A. B. C. There's three. Okay. P minus 3? Okay, and what's B and C? Are they similar or no? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, less than or equal to, and then greater than or equal to. 
And then the other one's greater than or equal to? Yeah. Same thing? Yeah. Okay, these are the originals. Okay. All right, so let's do the first one. Yeah, let's do the first one. What shall we do first in the first one? Minus a 2. Okay, that's 13 equals negative absolute value of P minus 3. Okay, then what? Divide by a negative. Okay, we're going to get there. Divide by a negative. So that will be negative 13 equals P minus 3. Yeah? Okay, and we have to solve for P. Will the absolute value of something ever be equal to negative? No solutions. Okay? All right, now here's the deal. B and C are going to simplify to this also. Okay? Negative 13, P minus 3, they're going to simplify to that. But we divided by a negative to get to the negative 13. So this is no longer going to be a less than or equal to. It's going to be greater than or equal to. You see that? And this one now will be less than or equal to. Make sense? Okay. Which one will be no solutions? The first one right here? Will an absolute value ever be less than negative 13? No. So no solutions there as well. I don't know why I put zero on the first one. So A and B are both no solutions? Yeah? Okay. C, can you have it be greater than negative 13? Sure. Sure. What? Besides, three. Both sides what? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. 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 Yeah. 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 All reals. Yeah. All reals? Because no matter what, it's going to be a positive number, so it will always be greater than 13, negative 13, agree. right? So all reals, all real solution, okay? Hey, those are weird ones. Okay, good. What else? 68. 68. Is this A, B, C, D? E? E? A, B, C, D, E? These ones go fast, though. Okay, what you got? These are have like a bunch of zeros. Absolute value of C minus three equals zero. Okay. And then just all C minus three is what? Less than. Less than? Less than or equal to? Less than or equal to? Greater than, greater than or equal to? Yes. Yeah. C similar. Okay. All right. When will that thing be equal to zero? When C is three. Do you want me to do the math and show you? No. no? When c equals 3, that's the only time that that will be equal to 0. Yeah? OK, when will that thing be less than 0? Never, because you can't have an absolute value ever be less than 0, right? OK? So no solution for that one. OK? When will he be less than or equal to 0? When c equals 3. And in that case, we're only looking at the equal to one because he can't be less than. So we really can ignore that part, and we're just looking at the equal to part, right? When c is 3, OK? When will that thing be greater than 0? All real numbers except for 3. So all reals except x equals 3. Or you can just put x is not equal to 3. That's fine as well, OK? Do you understand why it's not 3? Because greater than zero would be just one and beyond, or, or really like 0.1 and beyond, whatever, right? Just numbers that are bigger than zero, not equal to zero as well, okay? When is he greater than or equal to zero? Always. Always, though. But he, but not in, you, can, you can have three now. Does that make sense? X can be three now, because it's equal to zero, or like equal to, okay? Do you see the difference between all of those? Weird stuff. Weird oh. stuff. Okay, 70? Yeah. We're just doing all of them. I mean, I don't care as long as you're like retaining this information, you know, because we have a test coming soon. Okay, somebody read it to me. Somebody? A 10 year old competes in gymnastics for okay. several competitions. Okay, got it. She received the following all around scores 36, 36.9, 36.8. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. 37.1. And 37.4. Okay. Her coach recommends that gymnasts whose all around scores average at least 37. At move. least 37. Move up. Okay. What does she have to get on the next one? Is that what it says? Right? So she's going to do one more. So if we add these together, she does one more, one more score. What do we put for that one more score? X. X. Sure. Let's put X there. I'm going to do this. Okay. And we're averaging. So that means we have to divide by? Five. Because there's five scores now total, right? X included. Okay. And we want that to be at least 37. At least 37. Greater than or equal to 37. Okay. All right, now what? Solve that bad boy. Solve that bad boy. How are you going to? Sure, let's times 5 over. What's 37 times 5? 150 plus 35. Uh, 185. Check me. Yeah. Okay. Ah, wrong way. Blah, blah, blah. Those numbers plus X, right? Your what do those numbers add up to be? Those numbers plus X, what do those numbers add up to be? 147.4. 147.4? Cool. Now what? Subtract. Subtract. 147.4. Okay, and we get X is greater than or equal to? 37.6. So if she wants to average out to be 37, she's got to make a 37.6 on the last one. Okay? Because she didn't do so hot on the first two. Right? Dang right. Make sense? Okay. What else? Anything else? Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the video here and I'll send that one off in a different thing. We're going to do a review next.